One bit of confusion is the difference between isolation and quarantine, because in a semantic sense, they really mean the same thing. But when public health experts or infectious disease doctors are talking about quarantine and isolation, isolation is what we do when someone is known to be positive. They isolate from the rest of the community. Quarantine is when someone has been exposed and so they need to stay home as well and not come in contact with anyone else because they could turn positive at any moment. A quarantine period has to allow for the variations in incubation period. That's what we call the period between when someone's exposed to the virus and when they actually test positive themselves. And that time can be anywhere from three to 14 days. So that's why for so long we had people quarantining for 14 days. Through more science, the CDC has found that um, most of the time, if someone hasn't developed symptoms by day 10 after an exposure, they're probably not going to. And so the CDC recently changed the quarantine period for exposed people to 10 days. And they further went on to say, if at seven days after your exposure, you have a negative PCR test, then we're confident enough that you're not gonna develop COVID-19, that it's reasonable to end your isolation at that point Keeping in mind that some people do develop COVID a little bit later than that, and we should always still watch for symptoms. This idea of a super spreader sometimes comes up in the news. And what we do know is there are cases where the, the virus spread more than we would have expected based on our current models or understanding. And so we don't exactly know what makes a super spreader event, except that a lot of people got COVID more than we would have expected. We know that some people are highly contagious. Um, something about the amount of virus replicating or or their cough is very efficient at spreading the virus. Um, so we definitely see those events. I've also seen cases where, you know, I would have thought someone would have gotten infected, but for whatever reason, they weren't as contagious as other people. So I am actually really proud of our Little Rock drive through testing site. A lot of energy and effort has gone into making it a really smooth process. So our drive through is open to anyone in the community who needs a test for any reason. They can actually drive up without an appointment. They'll be given a phone number to call and register. And then once they're registered and answer a few simple questions, they drive through the drive through they'll get swabbed, and then they're on their way. Oftentimes people are in and out of the parking lot within five or 10 minutes, depending on the line. So for those that have my chart, they can actually make the process even smoother. They can go on my chart and say, schedule an appointment for a COVID-19 test. It will ask them the questions that are required by the CDC, and then that makes their appointment. When they show up, all we have to do is click that they have arrived, and then they get tested as well. Results are available in my chart as soon as they're available to us, so people can have real-time results. And most of the time, depending on the volume, uh, people get results the same day or a day later. There are times that uh, there have been so many people getting tested that it took a little bit longer than that, but it's really a reliable way to get tested with really minimal phone calls or, or other uh, logistical hoops to jump through. At the drive-through, we run a PCR test, which is the most sensitive, bold standard sort of test. 